I see there's lots of people at the door. If you have an open seat next to you, please make sure to, yep, raise your hand. We got a seat up here. We got a seat over there. We can get more people in here until, until we create the most epic fire hazard ever. Um, ooh, ooh. I don't have fire extinguishers. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah. We'll go ahead and get started here. Um, this is the core conversation for the media in Drupal 8. Uh, not just media module, but the whole media ecosystem uh, in Drupal 8, because it encompasses way more than that. Um, so welcome. I'm glad you're here. Um, and we're going to go through uh, quite a bit, and then at the end, um, we'll do a little bit of live demos, because I love uh, chancing it, um, but I've tested it really well. We'll see how that goes. Uh, and have a, some QA at the end, because this should be a core conversation in the end, too. So I'd like to hear uh, your feedback on what you think uh, this plan is doing and how you, what direction we think we're headed in. Um, I'd love to hear feedback and uh, anything you have to ask. Um, and we can definitely pause at points, too. It's, just an, it's not a full presentation. Um, but a little bit about us. Um. Um. <laughs> uh, my name is Yanis. Uh, I'm slasher Sam on Drupal.org. I'm working for examiner.com, uh, which is a media company. We're running media portal. And before that, I was working in another media company, our national media company. And uh, so I'm kind of uh, stuck with media problems. Um, I'm also maintaining Plotload integration module, Discuss module. Uh, I was Summer of Code student, uh, and I was also a mentor now two times. Um, and uh, yeah, that's mostly it. I started my, my first Drupal moment was when my friend called me and said, would you build me a website for a tennis tournament? And I said, yes, of course, why not? And I've never did it before. And when he agreed, I started for the, to look for something that I could use for that, and I found Drupal. And uh, my name is Dave Reed. Um, we, have, we have a height difference here between us. That's kind of fun. Um, so I'm typically known as the module guy. Um, that's kind of my reputation in the community. Um, I think at one point the count is up to 120 plus modules or something like that. Um, so I have a lot of experience doing this and not maintaining some modules. Um, but about three years ago, I got involved with the media module um, and the whole ecosystem around it um, and really got attached to it because um, it was like one of these problems that like there's a really hard problem and it's, we're, don't feel like we're doing very well at it and I feel like it could really help and contribute to this. Um, and I was really fortunate that my previous employer, Palantir.net, was uh, totally agreed and wanted to help out too. Uh, and we had a really big push and a big sprint um, in Chicago and really helped move the, the 2x version of the module forward and stuff. Um, but we still have a, a ways to go. Um, and if we're going to share uh, fun Drupal moments too, um, my first core patch was some patch to fix Drupal HTTP headers on DreamHost. Um, which then Dries commented like the day afterwards, which I look back and that to have Dries comment on the patch like within 24 hours is kind of awesome. Um, but that doesn't happen anymore. So, and of course it got one fixed because DreamHost is not great as a host. Um, so anyway, why is media important? I mean, these are kind of fairly obvious things because, you know, people expect that we do it right. It's kind of one of those things that is like, well, is it right or does it need some work? And if it's right, it's like, okay, cool, Drupal. Uh, and if it's not, it's in that latter category, it may not, Drupal may not be evaluated uh, after that. Um, and can I kind of go along with that? The competition handles it better than us. You know, WordPress does great things out of the box with media. Um, I would call it simple, but it does it well. Um, and other systems do it pretty well too. Uh, we have lots of these media companies and enterprise clients that have advanced use cases and need to want to be using Drupal and have to integrate their media management. So like, we need to be the solution for that. Um, and funnily enough, people like posting pictures and cat GIFs, and they like using media and YouTube files and putting them on their blogs. So like, 
it's kind of a, a, a use things that everyone wants to do. So yeah, we have to get it right. Um, and especially for the editors and stuff, we want to make sure they, they have a good experience too. It's not just, you know, the end users and the end result of seeing the media. It's the result of being able to edit and add that media too. Um, we have to make sure we're doing a good job of that. And just all around handle it well. Yep. Uh, and of course, I like, I think it's funny because every DrupalCon keynote that Dries usually does uh, didn't happen this time. Um, but like everyone, else, what, if you could have one thing done in Drupal, if you could snap your fingers, what could it be? And in Portland, of course, it was, uh, it'd be media handling. Um, and it seems to always be the answer. Uh, but we always seem to not be making progress. Um, so we've got to make uh, a good effort here. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Drupal 8 and the current status of core only. Um, there have been some improvements to that. Um, that have been uh, pretty good. There's a, a file listing now in Drupal core out of the box. You can't really do much with it, but it just lists files. It's better than nothing. Um, and you can see where it's in use. That's kind of handy too. Um, you can actually, uh, with our official WYSIWYG editor, uh, CK editor support, you can actually embed images um, using the Drupal way. They're saved as files locally as Drupal and not just remote files or something else. Uh, you can provide alternate text and align it and caption it really nicely with HTML5 uh, goodness. Um, and that's out of the box. Um, but you can't like um, figure out how to, I think you can select an image style, but that's about it. Like you can't do uh, anything else to it, like make it a picture uh, element or that kind of thing. And we did add, uh, if you had an upload field, you can actually upload multiple files just using drag and drop, a uh, little thing. Um, but it's nice and a little handy there. Um, and to kind of uh, recap some of the problems that we're facing with uh, the actual modules and implementation, um, from the media module standpoint, uh, which I'm well versed in, and will be the first person to say, don't use the module, it has some issues. Um, you know, I'll be honest, we don't have a stable release for the 2.x version. Um, that's a big thing that we're encountering right now. Um, and a big re reason for that is the WYSIWYG handling. Um, we're doing some weird complex stuff with uh, the WYSIWYG stuff and like being o able to override fields on a file with the WYSIWYG dialog and it's causing all sorts of issues and encoding and all sorts of goodness. And so we're almost reaching a point where like we're, we have to figure out how to cut our losses with Drupal 7 and what to do, how to move forward to get that 2.0 release. Um, some people would say it's overly complex out of the box. I like to say as a typical developer, it's flexible and powerful. Um, but it's it was typically, people don't understand how to configure it. It's not intuitive in a Drupal fashion. Um, we fight a lot of battles with core assumptions because core doesn't think you can reuse files ever. Um, so we fight a lot of assumptions with that with media. Um, and of course, just like normal issues too, like maintainership. Like, we're all volunteers. We're not technically paid to work solely on this. I work around it on my side, on the side, and off off job. Or if like something happens for a client with Media Module, I can go and work on it then. Um, but for most of us, we're not paid to do this 100% of our time. Um, and then we also had some interesting modules come up, like Scald. You know, they did a wonderful job of what they wanted to do, um, but it also means that we're competing for resources then. Um, and we're competing with ideas and, you know, not really sharing uh, and collaborating as best as we could. Um, so, let's see. So we're starting to, like, try and figure out to get together. Uh, and we had this uh, discussion that was a result of DrupalCon Prague, I think it was. Um, and uh, was posted to our, our Drupal group um, what they thought uh, we should move forward with and a lot of us disagreed and it just ended up like a boxing match in a typical comment thread um, with no result, um, which was... And, and no chance for result. Yeah, and, was, and just not a good result from that, so. Um, but thankfully, we uh, did have uh, an opportunity to uh, sprint together in New York City uh, earlier this year. Um, it was really great that they, they got us all to come out and got us to sit in the same room, which is really important when you have disagreements, um, that we kind of all got together and said, okay, maybe it's okay to disagree on stuff 
And let's try and maybe figure out what's the common functionality that we have. What are the common components we can work on together? Let's at least build a base uh, of this ecosystem that we can both build on top of but collaborate together with. Um, so yeah, that was, that was really nice. And this is kind of showing this plan that we developed there. Uh, are you taking over? Or should I? It's, it's your part. Okay, all right, I'll keep going. All right, I'll just keep going. Um, so it ends up that uh, this new, so file entities like the typical, the most popular way that we stored uh, and interact with files in Drupal 7. Uh, it basically extends the Drupal core's native uh, file entity and makes a UI around it, lets you interact with them, um, independent of content and other entities. Um, and there is the, pro the proposal from uh, Prague to make a separate thing called a media entity um, that could point to a file or could point to a YouTube video, you know, that wasn't necessarily a file or a tweet or that kind of thing. Um, whereas the file entity approach is, um, tries to treat everything as a file. Um, you know, I like to think of it as you uploaded a video to YouTube, so it exists as a file somewhere. Um, um, and so we disagree on this kind of storage area, um, and we're probably gonna keep working on that separately. Um, so there are probably, there's a media entity module now uh, that's being uh, worked on for Drupal 8, and there's a file entity module that we're working on porting uh, but at the very basic stages right now. Um, but given that, um, we can start to break other things up uh, and stuff that we can share. Um, and if we can make this ecosystem work for both of our different storage components, you know, file entity and media entity, it means that we're doing a good job. And that's actually a good like measure of like, success for us. Um, like you could use this base components to do other stuff, whether you don't wanna use media entity or file entity. Um, they could be used independently. Um, and so we're kind of going to show you uh, the approach that we have. Uh, and we also came up with a, a roadmap here uh, for what we're going to do. Yeah, so. Um, we've split our roadmap in a few steps. Uh, first step is uh, is basic APIs that, that we need. Um, basic API for embedding stuff into WYSIWYG. Um, basic API for a module that we call Entity Browser that is basically responsible for uh, finding and selecting media items. Um, uh, storage components, because it's the lowest layer of the system. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we have some things that are already done. Uh, most of work uh, that, that we've invested was in uh, WYSIWYG integration. That's mostly because of the fact that the WYSIWYG integration module that we currently call Entity Embed was a summer of code project this year. Um, we got a great student called Chandan, his CS underscore shadow on triple.org and IRC. Uh, he was very enthusiastic, very productive, and uh, as you will see later, we achieved a lot in that part. Um, the next step uh, is to start using this API to provide uh, user experience, UIs, um, and here again, because of the summer of code, we already have integration with CK Editor, uh, this works, basically it's almost feature complete. Um, we are still struggling on some other parts where we're uh, mostly dependent on volunteer work. Um, and when we have these basic systems in place with APIs and UIs on top, um, we will focus on, on display configuration, integration with like third party uploaders, like things that are important but are not operating in the basis of the system. Uh, and at the end, we have like third-party integrations and things like cropping derivatives. Um, it's, most of these things are must-have, but we need everything below in order to work on this. Um, 
So let's see uh, which components we're working on um, a bit more in depth. Uh, first module is Entity Browser. As I already mentioned, it is a tool for listing, finding, creating, and then selecting entities. Um, if you're familiar with, let's say, media widget in, in Drupal 7, where you have this pop-up that opens, and then you have tabs where you can select media items or search YouTube or upload things. Uh, it's similar. It's based on the same idea. The, the main difference is that it's, uh, it's designed to be a general tool for selecting entities. Uh, it should, should allow you to use it even with entities that are not media related. Let's say you have an entity reference field uh, and uh, you want to add few related articles, um, you should be able to use Entity Browser to do that. Entity Browser would then open, uh, give you a view with exposed filters where you could search and then uh, select few articles and those would be then referenced uh, from, from this main article. Um, there is you know, there is nothing preventing us to implement things like search API in this thing, so it's the way we're, we're trying to design it, it's very powerful um, and very pluggable. Um, I'd like to speak on that too. Um, so the concept of the media browser you know, has different tabs, like one might be a library, one might be like an upload a new file, one might be a paste in the URL to a remote file or YouTube video. Um, the idea is that those individual tabs should also be field widgets that you can then use on individual fields. Um, so if you wanted to just use the library part on a field, you could just use the library part. Um, and that way, any kind of widget that you have available for your file and image fields could then be something you can put in a media browser as a tab. Um, so like, you have a wi we have a widget already for uploading a new file. Why not just use that um, for our upload tab? Um, so that's an interesting kind of pluggable, reusable concept for that. Yeah. Um, few more potential use cases for that. Um, let's say we want to upload few images, select few other images that are, that are already in the system, and then create a gallery out of this entire set. Entity browser should be able to allow you to do that, basically in one step. Um, um, then it should allow you to search YouTube for videos and embed it into WYSIWYG, let's say. Um, it should also allow you to like have a standalone page where you select um, like 50 articles and when you submit, those are sent to some third party site via an API or something like that. You name it. It's, it's, uh, our intent is and our hope is that we'll do it in a way that, that will allow you to really use it for any situation where you have to deal with searching and selecting entities for any context, basically. Um, we are currently working on some basic APIs. Um, we don't have any UIs or any demo. We just have some mocks. Um, it's, yeah, it's similar to what we have in, in D7, um, uh, except it, it, we, we, we want it to do it much more pluggable. Let's say you should be able to change these tabs on top with something else. If you don't like tabs, maybe you want to use a dropdown to, to switch between your so-called widgets. Widgets are these tabs where then you can, widget can be a view or, or an upload form or yeah, you name it. Um, also to support use cases like the one that I mentioned before where you first upload a few images and then select for you other images in the same step, uh, we should allow, we should like support something like this where you can go to one widget and let's say upload things and then these items appear below in the, the list of currently selected entities and then you can go to next widget and select a few other uh, images, let's say, and they also appear down there. And when you're done with this, you can use 
this currently select list to be propagated down to entity reference or anything similar to that. Um, we have uh, an issue in our issue queue where we're discussing architecture. Uh, this is the basic idea. Uh, we have uh, kind of like four, four areas where we have pluggable interfaces. Uh, one area is widget. Widget is the actual form where you either select or upload or create or do whatever to get those entities. Uh, then we have uh, widget selector plugin, which is which decides how you will choose which widget to use. And selection display is this part below that I showed, um, how the list of currently selected entities is displayed. And of course, uh, browser can be used like in an overlay, which is how you you get this in D7. But we also want to support other forms. We don't want to assume how Entity Browser looks. We just want to you know, give you the tool, and then you decide how it looks. Um, then we have Media Entity, as Dave mentioned, is one of the two storage components. Um, it, it's like it takes the approach of not everything is a file. Media can be a local file, but you know it's not necessarily. Um, creates a new entity type, which then we use to, to, to store the information about media. And it uses the standard field API fields um, to do the actual storage. Let's say if we have a local file, we have a file field on it. If we have a YouTube video, you can have a link field, which then stores the link to a YouTube video or a text area field where you paste the embed code, things like that. Um, and as a result of that, not everything is stored in the file manage table. Just things that, that are uploaded in the actual file field are. Um, and then it comes with so media type plugins um, that, that those plugins basically provide business logic validation metadata for each media type. Media type being either local image, YouTube video, Vimeo video, and you know, et cetera. Um, uh, validation part exposes a validation callback that then we use in a form to validate data that was entered, but it's, 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 uh, it's not tied only to forms. You can use it in your custom code if you want to do something with it. Um, Plugin also gives you a list of so-called fields, but those are not the entity fields, are fields that this plugin knows how to provide to you, either by stripping some data out of embed code or URL, or connecting to an API and fetching tags, description, no, whatever. Um, then you can also configure mapping between the, the this fields that are provided by media type to the actual entity fields. And when you save the media entity, it will fetch these fields and save it in, in, an, in the actual entity. But you don't need to do that. Maybe you can just access these fields via you know, an API um, to to use it just at render time if you don't actually have to store store it. Um, here's how it works. I created a so-called media bundle with um, a new URL field and video ID field. And I attached a YouTube plugin to it. Um, if you want to play with this, you can find both media entity and YouTube plugin on our GitHub group. Um, and then I tried to enter Drupal.org as a link to YouTube video, and validation callback recognizes this as a you no know, wrong URL and complains. And when I entered correct YouTube URL, it saves because you know it detects that everything is all right. And since I defined mapping between the YouTube video ID and this 
text field that I have on my entity, it already auto-populated it. So now I have both uh, ID and URL here, but you know, I could have description that would be fetched from YouTube or title or text or you know, everything that they provide for us. That's your turn. Okay. Um, so kind of looking back with the entity browser, um, I think it's just kind of indicative of uh, our goals that like how many different kind of browsing like view interfaces are there for Drupal 7 that kind of do the same thing and we're trying to replace them all. Um, yeah, our, we're keeping our goals low. Um, and along with keeping our goals low uh, is entity embed because there's how many modules for embedding stuff in body fields in Drupal 7? There's a lot. Uh, and we wanted to do it right. Um, so uh, again, uh, to reiterate, uh, we had a great, great summer code student, uh, Shandan, who worked on this all summer and did the majority of the work and just was super terrific. Um, so we have the entity embed module for embedding any type of entity in any kind of filtered WYSIWYG text field. Um, you can configure any number of buttons. So like you can pick a, a button for embedding nodes. You can pick a button for embedding files. You can have a button for embedding users. Um, all different buttons, but one per entity type. Um, but it works for all entity types out of the box, which is really nice. Um, and another interesting thing that we'll see in the, the live demo is we're kind of continuing on this thing theme of reusing and reusability, um, that the way that we display the embedded item, by default, uh, you get to pick from an entity reference field formatter, uh, or if like you've picked a file or an image, you can pick a file or image field uh, formatter as a way to display your embedded item. Um, and you can also write a custom version to display it if you want to, but it's like encouraging people to write field formatters as a way to, to display things. Um, so we wanted to reuse those. Um, and uh, the tiny Jeff Eaton and myself would be really, really happy that the way that this stores in the actual body field is one HTML tag um, that stores all the attributes in like data attributes in a nice HTML5 way. Um, so yay, that's, it's terrific, we get to see it. Um, and an awesome thing is that it supports UIDs um, out of the box. So if you pick node one to be embedded in your body field, uh, underneath the hood it'll automatically put in the UUID of that node since all entities in Drupal 8 have UUIDs. Um, and it'll put that in there and it'll always use that to load that node uh, that's embedded in your body field. So if you do a deployment, it, will, it won't break. Um, which is really nice. And then, like, after we did all this work with the entity embed module, we kind of realized that there's a lot of similarities. Like, the concept of embedding things in the WYSIWYG, like, configuring the buttons and a selection kind of UI and then picking how to display it kind of shares this common functionality. Um, so things like picking a URL, like a, a YouTube video. If you just want to put a YouTube video in your, in your WYSIWYG, like it kind of has the same thing. You, know, you type in the link to the YouTube file, um, and then you have a display. What size do you want to output it as? Um, so we're kind of making this whole uh, embed framework or API now um, based on entity embed um, that will work for entities, uh, URLs, um, short codes, which is like a WordPress kind of macro kind of thing um, that we want to support. Um, and also like the fields from the same entity that you are using. Um, so if you're on node one, I want to say, put my tag field in the body here and display it like this. Um, so we want to make sure that's possible. Um, our second of two storage mechanisms, file entity. Um, has anyone used file entity before in Drupal 7? Yeah, that's a good amount. Um, so we're planning to keep it pretty similar, but a little bit more split up. Um, so the, the good portion of file entity that's basically like, hey, let's expose the UI for files and let you add and edit and delete them without having to interact with your node um, as independent actual good entities. Um, we're gonna be porting that uh, as, as uh, in Drupal 8. Um, but the stuff that like makes you add fields to files or at different file types so, like audio files or video files and those types can have different fields um, We might be splitting that off into a separate thing So like if people just want a UI for interacting with their files, they could have that um, 
without having to over-complexify it with adding, oh, oh, I've got fields on my files now. I don't know what to do with those. What should I be doing with those? And I've got all of a sudden these six different file types, and I don't know what I'm really doing with those. Um, so we want to make that a little bit optional. Um, another uh, fun part of file entity that we're spinning off, um, has anyone seen like the, the manage file display tab? Yeah, it's a pretty painful process. You have to like configure the different types of ways the file could be, di be displayed and then configure the order in which to try them. And if the first one works, great, it'll return that. And if not, it'll try the second one. And if not, it'll try the third one. So yeah, and it's just super weird. Um, but it has a valid use case, which is like, say you have a file field in Drupal core that you have uploaded both audio and video files to because you maybe didn't separate them into two different fields, whatever. Um, but you want to display the video as video, you know, HTML5 video, but the audio as audio tags. Um, there's, you'd have to write a custom formatter to do that logic for you. Whereas if you just had a formatter that output, oh, I, it looks like this file is a video. I will output it as a video tag. And if not, output nothing. Uh, and if the same for an image or an audio, um, you could use this new fallback formatter module um, to do this. Just write in your field, manage fields um, as, as available independently. Um, so we kind of abstracted that out as well. Um, so we're excited about kind of not having that as custom, so. Um, another fun thing that we uh, encountered, actually encountered on a client project, but I wanted to kind of bring into our ecosystem. Um, if you have a file field in Drupal core, it means you can't use any of your image formatters on that field. Like if you wanted to display it as an image style, you can't, because um, it's a file field, not an image field. Um, but if you install this module, now you can. Um, so then it kind of works with that fallback formatter behavior too. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then another quick module too is the field formatter. So like untangle all the instances of me saying field formatters and all, all that together. Um, so if you have an entity reference field, and this will allow you to output a specific field from that referenced entity, just one field. Um, so it kind of solves our entity embed. I want to display the field from node two in my body, but not the whole node two. Um, so that's just that. Um, and then kind of like the big question is what happens to the media module or these, you know, the scald module in Drupal 8. Um, I can't speak specifically to scald, but um, at least from media, what we're looking to do with all these components then, you know, we'll have configuration entities, you know, we'll have a pre-configured media browser with our library and upload tabs um, and kind of have just the glue code that's necessary to bring it all together. Um, it'll have more dependencies, but I think that'll be okay. That's kind of what we're encouraging in Drupal 8 now. Um, so yeah, any questions so far? Yes, go ahead. Uh, just, you know, Mike's right there. Be, be careful of the people on the floor. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering about the, the explanation you, you gave uh, about um, the, the different, like, I, th I think it was the in the media entity part of the presentation. So I, I'm not sure how the file entity storage solution would handle that too, but like you had different bundle for the media entity type, you had created a YouTube bundle. What would make it similar or not similar to a daily motion or an other video provider uh, uh, entity? Like, would that be a different bundle? If so, <coughs> like, can you say that they are videos? What do they have in common? Um, yeah, so it would probably be the different bundle unless you write a media type plugin that handles both. Uh, and then this distinction, like to, to bring all these video types together as videos, we would use taxonomy. Because when we were thinking about it, it makes more sense. Mm -hmm. It's easier. We were it's, it's like what, what the current D7 solutions like kind of vary with, uh, so is, currently, is there a layer this D7 of mostly media type and provider for the same media type, or like are different providers just separate media types? Um, so in D7, there is no media entity. So this is kind of a new approach that we're trying. But like 
mostly when most of solutions in D7, when they display media in, in, in a listing, let's say, the, the, the most top level filter that they use is based on bundle. And with media entity, now we, we were thinking about using it as a taxonomy just because of this problem. Because we were thinking how to, how to make, let's say, daily motion in YouTube the same bundle called video. And then we realized that we would probably um, end up with a set of fields that are used on one, for one type and not used for the other. And we would have to either hide those fields when you know that you have YouTube video or just have a huge massive form. Um, and then we were thinking how to overcome that and, you know, like uh, Sasha said when I was discussing this with him that we're probably trying to implement bundles on top of bundles, which is probably not the best idea. So the uh, like plan is to use taxonomy for along with bundles to, to, to bring this together. Uh, yes, in the, in the back of the room. Microphone, or I, I can repeat it if you want to stay back there. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so the question is with field embedding, if once I've saved like and I'm displaying the node, can I then inline edit that field? Yeah, yeah, you can definitely configure how it's displayed. Yeah, um, you can, you can. Yeah. So the question is, can you change it after you've embedded it? Yes, you can. Uh, I will show you in the demo. Um, so I'll, I'll quickly uh, hit through some some challenges that our team is currently facing in Drupal eight to kind of bring some attention. Uh, if you're going to be at Code Sprints maybe Friday. Um, these are kind of some things that we are, are looking to figure out as a as contrib module uh, initiative that we need solved. Um, the big first one is how do we manage external dependencies right now? Because um, core has taken the shortcut. It made its composer.json file and put it right in the root and downloaded all the dependencies in, its, in Drupal. Um, can contrib modules do the same thing? I know there's the, uh, the composer manager module. But kind of what's the official recommendation for how Contrib manages their own external dependencies? We don't really know. Um, there's some really fun, challenging issues that have to deal with uh, formatters and widgets. Um, always assume that there's like a parent entity and like I can't work with them as independent objects. Because I would just like to say, hey, formatter class, I've got you this configuration and this item, please display it. Um, and it ends up being way more complex than that. Um, so if you have any knowledge, uh, I know there's some certain people in this room that might. Um, we, we would love your help with this um, or better solutions. But we have something that works right now. Um, we want to make sure that files everywhere in Drupal use the proper access control. Um, there's just the, the private file access system in Drupal 7. Um, and then there's the file entity access API also in Drupal 7 if you have the module. And they don't always talk to each other or work in like we can't get core to respect the file access API. It only listens to the private file access. Um, so we want to make sure that in Drupal 8 at least it's consistently using one access API that could be overridden if needed. Um, so we're, we're working on that. We're making progress. Um, there's some fun challenges with type data. Um, there's an issue out there right now that uh, if you have a space in your file name, it fails validation uh, for the file entity. Um, so we're trying to work on that one too. Um, I would like to report a success that we had. Um, if you know in Drupal 7, if you added a image to your node in a, on a field, saved it, and then went back and removed it and maybe changed it to something else, if that file was not used anywhere else, Drupal would automatically delete it for you, um, which kind of screws up with the concept of reusable files and goes back to that fighting that core assumption. Um, 
So now it's actually configurable in Drupal 8, that window of when that file expires if it's unused. Um, so you could make it two months or something like that, which is a little bit more safer. Uh, or you could disable it, but that could also run into some disk issues if you don't have a lot of disk space. Um, but we also have an interesting problem now that the file temporary status uh, is referred to two things. It's like you've uploaded a file but haven't saved it to a node yet. Um, and it also means the file was used at one point, but now it's orphaned. It's considered temporary again. Um, and it's kind of a confusing thing. We're having a discussion about it uh, on Monday. So maybe we'll, we'll talk more about that on Friday. Um, you want to go with demo and then we can... Sure, yeah. Yeah, we'll switch over to the demo because uh, it's the most interesting part. So let's see. So I have my Drupal 8 site. Uh, from a Git pull recently this morning that I have confirmed that I should work now, um, but I have not dared to try and pull it again. Um, and I've enabled the entity embed module. That's what we're gonna show you right now. Um, Cause I'm just really proud of this work that uh, the team did. Um, so once I've enabled the module, um, I go to my uh, input con text format configuration, my text and editors, um, and I'm in the full HTML. And I can see down below, I have a filter for display embedded entities. I need to enable that. Um, and then I have already drag and dropped some entity embed buttons there with like the nice E there for entity. Um, uh, I have dragged them into the configuration. Um, so that's all I really need to do to embed entities in my WYSIWYG. Um, I can show you this interface quick. This is where you actually add another embed button. So I have made two. Um, one actually ships with the module by default for embedding nodes, but I made one for files too. Um, so I could go through and I could actually add a new embed button. I could pick which entity type it should correspond to. Um, I can actually change the button image as well uh, from right here. Otherwise it uses the default E. Um, so, but then these are config entities, yep. Yeah. <laughs> And that this is like the, the part that I was looking at. I was like, oh, this should be like just a generic CK editor button, like config entity, like for our embed API. So this isn't really specific to an entity embed. Um, but all right, here we'll get to the fun part. Um, so I have, let's see, two items of content here. I've got a uh, first node with a picture of my lovely cat, Rodney. Um, and a second node with uh, some placeholders here. So let's go ahead and edit this. And I'm gonna go ahead and click here and I'm gonna hit my first uh, entity embed, which it's lo lovely says content. Uh, so I'm going to embed some content. Um, this part here of selection is kind of very basic. Um, because once entity browser is finished, we're going to integrate this into the first part here. Uh, but for now, we needed some kind of fallback behavior that just allows things to work. Um, so right now, I just type the ID or UUID of the node I want to embed. Um, we may change this up to like autocomplete on title. Um, that might be easier. Um, but I'll pick item one. And I see that I've got the title of what I want to embed. And I have a number of options here. Um, and this is kind of um, what I was talking about with field formatters. Um, so these... Uh, author, label, entity ID, and rendered entity, those are all entity reference field formatters. Um, and I have some other field formatters that for, are for entity reference fields, um, or our fallback module too um, is available. Um, but by default, you know, we want a rendered entity. We want to render it with a, a view mode, and I can pick a view mode teaser and embed. Ta-da. And I can even right click it, and I can edit. And uh, maybe I want to change it to my default view mode again. Ta-da. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Have a question. question, yes. Question. Um, can you uh, limit the uh, interactable format? Uh, yes, the, all, all the uh, uh, plugin 
these options for display, these are actually plugins. Um, so they're kind of a wrapper around the field formatters, and there's an access method that says, oh, is this item a ren an entity that can be rendered? If so, return true. Um, or like, you could have your own custom logic in this access method that says, oh, does the node have this field out filled out? Okay, yes, it can be displayed with this plugin. Yeah, that's that's the confusing part. I mean, we're at least we're literally reusing the same uh, formatter labels that you use when you pick how to render a field. Um, so it's we kind of have the same problem as core. Like, how do you explain what field formatter to use on an entity reference field? Um, so yeah, I kind of recognize that uh, it's kind of confusing, but we're also just we're at least have the same problem as core. So if core fixes this, we can fix it here too. Um, so uh, something I'll show, let's see, what's show label and my options that are available as my formatter are right there that I want to use. I can change it uh, and it's there and it works. Um, I'll show the source for this because I think this is the coolest part. Um, so this is using a custom HTML tag called Drupal-entity. Uh, and we've stored like what button I use to embed it with. Um, I've got uh, my data attribute for what display plugin I'm using. So it's the entity reference field and the entity reference label field formatter. Um, I've got my settings uh, that I had uh, that are JSON encoded um, into that data attribute. So I said I want to display this as a link. So that's my, my JSON there. I've got my entity ID of one. Uh, Entity label, I'm not sure why we have that, but uh, entity type, and I've got my unique ID as well um, directly there. And then, so then what this happens is when this is rendered uh, through the filter, this is converted to just a normal div, um, and it displays the entity as it needs to. Um, yes? This is implemented as a CK editor widget. Yeah, we've had a lot of assistance from uh, Wim Lears, um, who's been doing a lot of good work uh, in D8 with the CK editor stuff. Um, so he's definitely like been our consultant uh, for how to do stuff. Um, another thing I'll just quickly show, like one of the uh, common common problems we get in the in the media module is like I want to embed a link to my uploaded PDF file, like. It seems like such a simple use case and something we could easily do, um, but it's a hard problem for us to do in media well. Um, but I'd like to report that's not long, no longer the case. Um, I'm going to embed a file. Uh, it's an image, actually, but it's, it's okay for demonstration purposes. And again, I, I see which entity I've selected. That's not exactly too helpful. And I have a list of entity reference field formatters file field formatters and image field formatters to pick from. It's kind of a lot of options and fallback appears here twice, I understand. Um, but if I just picked a generic file, which is a file field formatter, um, I can type in the description. And it outputs as a link to that file using that field formatter um, with a, a link to that file. Um, and I could edit it again. And since this is an image, we'll do an image uh, formatter. And so I can pick the image style. I can even provide my alternate and title text right here, uh, which is also serialized into the attribute. And embed. And if I view my source for this, I can see it just encoded as a regular alt attribute and a regular title attribute in this element directly. And that just gets passed through when it's rendered as an image. Um, so it just works, um, which is really, really nice. Um, so yeah. Yes. Ah, I get it asked every time, every time. I can rely on that question. Can it be backported to Drupal 7? Um, so I would like to say it could be. Um, none of us have really investigated too much into it. I think I have had some people report back um, 
I mean, the filter itself, totally easy to backport. That's fairly easy to do. Um, the harder part is the interaction with the CK editor and the whole JavaScript interaction, because um, there's not really a library to do all these forms and stuff um, in Drupal 7 uh, in a good way with CK editor. Um, so I'm open to it being backported. I would love if anyone has the challenge and wants to take that on. We have an open issue in the queue for this. Um, but it, I don't think it's like something that we're going to be spending time on as our, our, our volunteer basis. So it's possible. It's theoretical. I'll leave it at that. So yes. Uh, it's right behind you. Yep. So I think uh, in Drupal 7, if we, if we want to do the same thing, we had a scan model. We can, we can do less or more the same thing. We can, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, embed a, a media or a, or a file or any type of, uh, of uh, entity into the, into the body field and it's, and it's had a plugin to work with CK editor. But the implementation, the implementation is a lot, uh, is less uh, clean than uh, than in Drupal 8 because of, uh, because of uh, many limitations in Drupal 7, but uh, we can we can have less or more the same uh, functionality if we want to do it in Drupal 7. Um, so I'll point out that um, I believe that Scald doesn't actually use a text f filter to render the items, um, which is what we're using in this module. Um, and it's thanks to the Drupal 8 improvements that we're doing a very, very late rendering of these actual entities. Um, so like, even if the, the process text is cached, um, the actual rendering happens even after that. Um, it actually it happens after the text is retrieved from cache. Um, so things like making sure that the user has, uh, can access this node that's rendered um, is checked very, very late and always uh, checked and not cached. Um, so I think that maybe one of the, the things that's hard to backport is the filter system in Drupal 7 has a lot of, you can't late render um, many things. So that might be one of the hard challenges to do. So, But this works anywhere that filter text is used, not just in a field. Like, it could be anything that uses check markup. Um, so. Mm -hmm. But it works on a field and not text format is the key. Yeah. yeah. So it has to be a field value where it's used. So like, um, so it, 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 the, it was a technical implementation of how Scald actually it uses uh, some kind of token with an HTML comment. Um, and then in the hook, uh, in the field formatter view um, kind of process replaces that. Um, so it's like an alternative to the text format system, kind of, um, to get around some of the limitations of the Drupal 7 text format system. Um, so, yes, in the back. Uh, so we can we can just uh, say that, like, regarding the 7 backport, so I spent a lot of my time, like, working on, well, it's maybe something like this, like, CK called base, which is what's called a, like, called a replace base, called, but it integrates a few different block media in there. And Okay. We didn't go like we didn't we didn't go for the generic entity type which is basically a plug that uh, like this will put some otherwise like could be on scold or scold and uh, use it like it basically does more or less that. One interesting thing we, we ran into was the need for like a specifically if you're trying to embed media entities. Uh, you might be interested in CSS and JS for the various media players, which means that the AJAX request that you're doing to view the uh, field view entity in the, in the uh, uh, media base should have should use the, the AJAX API so that like you check which currently is the other I think it I think it does. Well, we can check. So, how the how the preview fetches and with respect to additional attached CSS and JS, and, yeah. And, and one other uh, um, tricky point we encountered, and I was wondering how this could be addressed. Could like Scode as does uh, its own thing with entity and entity rendering. Like basically, you can render an entity in a view mode, but you can pass several options on top of that. Which key, like the official entity view system, doesn't necessarily. 
Got it. Okay, so I'll make a note of that, that some things may need to operate differently with the preview mode in the WYSIWYG um, versus the actual rendering. We'll, we'll note that. Thank you. Um, let's get through um, just the last little bit, and then if we have more time for questions, uh, we'll take them, okay? Um, Yeah, so you're probably asking yourself, how can I help? Because um, we need your help. Uh, currently, the, the, like, we are pretty confident that we have a good plan um, that, that can really move the whole media ecosystem forward. And the biggest blocker right now is that we're all volunteers and we have very limited time that we can spend on this. And it's... It, it, like the fact that the project that was Summer of Code project and we had a really smart and, and productive student for the whole summer dedicated only to embedding solution. Uh, and, and now embedding solution, it's way forward from everything else, basically. Uh, that proves that if, you know, that we, if we have people that are dedicated to this, we can achieve a lot. Um, so without your help, um, any way of help, like this won't magically happen. Um, we we need people from you know all different uh, expertise. Uh, we will we currently we're we're mostly working on backend development because it's but the nature of of the basic APIs. But sooner or later probably sooner. We will need a lot of front-end work to be done, uh, user experience design. Um, we're also probably looking for a project management because we like to develop and we don't want to deal with that. Um, we need your ideas. Uh, we need your past experience. We are collecting uh, user stories for media on drupalmedia.org. Am I correct? Yep. Yeah, so if you, if you have something that you noticed during one of your projects that was a huge problem and then and, and you had to hack around it, uh, go to drupalmedia.org and, and, and let us know. Um, we have both right in the next slot. Uh, we have weekly scrum meetings on IRC. It's every Tuesday. Uh, 3.30 p.m. GMT. It might be one hour before or after, depending on time zones, because it's, it's messy. But I think it's correct. Um, our development is done on GitHub in a group called Drupal Media. We automatically sync all our uh, repos to Drupal.org. Uh, so you can also find all the code there. Uh, we are using issues on Drupal.org, and we, we, we are linking pull requests to issues so, you know, to, to give you visibility that you need to, to help us. Um, we're using hackpads uh, for our notes and brainstormings and uh, you know, everything that needs to be written down. Uh, we have a group on GDO. Uh, you can contact us directly if you're more comfortable this way. Uh, of course, we have a sprint on Friday. Come and help us. We will be on Batcamp, and you can organize a sprint if you want. Let us know. Um, if you have a developer that wants to dedicate part of his, its time, uh, let us know. If you want to fund us, we would appreciate it. Uh, because only this way it would happen. It will happen. Um, and that's it. And uh, we have zero minutes for questions. Yeah, I think, I think we're pretty much at time, so I think we'll call it. Um, if you want to come check us out after the session or that, uh, the BOF. Uh,
uh, right after this too. It's Thank you. Just digital. Just digital launch. Is this a launch or a room?